welcome to the Hans Brinker Leadership Series, Extraordinary Leaders in Extraordinary Times by Adi Bhattas. I am Hiral Desai. COVID-19 is a pandemic of a millennium and it has changed our lives irrevocably. We believe people fighting this pandemic at the cold phase, especially in healthcare, travel, supply chain, government, non-profit and media deserve recognition. I'm Sanjay Vishwanathan. Through the Hans Sprinkle Leadership Series, we are identifying extraordinary leaders in these extraordinary times. And it is very similar to legendary 15-year-old boy who mythically went, saved his nation from being flooded. Previously, in our series so far, we've met leaders who are on the front line fighting this battle against the coronavirus from healthcare and nonprofit sectors. There's yet another sector that's also playing its part, but hardly gets a mention because most people don't think they are involved, you know. And as you and I can gather from our research, the hospitality is one sector that is actually helping governments around the world in several ways. One, hosting guests who are stuck in their in foreign lands before they get back to their home country because of lack of travel options. Second is where we've seen hospitals, uh, you know, to have their overflow handled, especially with the families of COVID inflicted patients. Um, hotels have stepped up to take care of them. And it is in this context that today we have um, Royal Orchid, uh, which is a a, a well-known brand in India, and they have been providing relief to India's healthcare system by accommodating patients, um, relatives, uh, and family uh, in their property. Absolutely. You know, these are but two examples of stellar role that the hospitality sector is actually playing. You know, all this, while its employees are also taking pay cuts to support a cash-served balance sheet. Let me introduce one such extraordinary leader to you who has put his health and well-being at risk to relentlessly fight this battle against coronavirus on the front line. Pranav Upadhyay, Hotel Manager, Royal Orchid, Regenta Place, Bangalore. Uh, welcome to the show, Pranav. Thank you. Thank you, Viral. Uh, Pranav, first, let us hear the experience from the horse's mouth. How has it been to be on the front line? Because you have been managing a hotel which has given... Uh, which has been given to the municipality for quarantine? Ah, uh, well, I'll tell you recently when uh, I was at home and uh, I, I was seeing the pandemic from the home over TV, you know, some right news, some fake news. Is, so that was a time when I was really concerned. I was a bit, uh, you can say, scared. But when I got a call that, you know, uh, we are going to accommodate quarantine guests in our hotel. And uh, so we have to come out and start it again. So I was uh, with a very mixed feelings. I came on and then when I came and uh, say I stayed here for, I was staying in the hotel only and stayed for a day or two. Then I realized that uh, when I saw people who had been, you know, come in contact with some COVID patients, they have been quarantined over here. And when I saw that, and that was a time when I, you know, when I started gaining confidence that no, I need to be with them because, you know, they were very fearful. They were very afraid. So as a service provider, if we show that thing on our face, they become double afraid. Correct. You know? So yes, so we, I holded myself back and try, started fighting it with full force. I mean, I mean, it must be a great experience as well for you. Uh, if you could help us understand, how did this entire system work? Was it the government or the municipality who approached you? Or was it the decision of the hotel to say that, okay, we are going to provide this service? Uh, it was both ways, I will say. The government had uh, looked, were looking for some hotels and many of them rejected this offer. But uh, as our CMD, he is a very, you know, he believes a lot into CSR and all. So he advised us to, why don't you go and meet them and uh, give a couple of our properties because we run around eight properties in Bangalore. And he was the one who, you know, pioneered this and asked us to go meet the authorities and take this forward. 
where our salesperson went, met them, and then they started this. So when we think about uh, the guests at your property today, uh, Pranav, um, give us an idea as to what's the profile of guests at your property now? Well, uh, mainly the hospital staff who got into contact unknowingly with the COVID patients, they were quarantined. So doctors, nurses, other support staff, you know, maybe security, all those who came in contact with them were quarantined at our place. And did the guests have to pay uh, for this no. stay or how no. was it handled? That, was, uh, that is being paid by the government. I see. That's, uh, that's innovative, uh, especially in, in the current times. Right. Yeah. Uh, what kind of precautions did you and the staff have to take, uh, especially while working with um, the uh, quarantine people? See, I'll tell you the complete process. What happens is uh, the moment we get a notification from the health officer that mm -hmm. we are getting in some people, we ready ourselves. What we had done is we had kept our room ready because we know that we cannot go much in contact with them. Everything has to be contactless, as contactless as possible. So we preempt all those requirements which they might have. So we started with the rooms. Like when they are in the room for 14 days, what all they'll require. So beforehand, we made sure that everything is placed in the room, maybe the bed linen, the bath linen, because once they come in, we were advised not to go inside the room, not to get in contact with them in any ways. So we started from the room, we set the room ready, then from the entrance of the place. So we made sure that security, you know, is uh, equipped with everything like a thermometer, a sanitizers, masks, gloves and everything. So people used to come there. They'll come at the reception. Again, the pre-registration was done. The keys were left out over there. We used to give, uh, receive them with a big smile because they were already afraid and they were very much concerned what has happened. You know, seeing the news and all, they were very much afraid. Like, you know, they, they were like, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. So we were the ones who tried to give them lots of hope. We treated them not like untouchables. We ensured, we, you know, we, we, we greeted and treated them with a big smile. We took them from there, sent them in the room. And in the room also, like, we had to serve them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So everything, we tried to make it contactless, wherein we had put our chair outside every room. We'll go and put their meal in the room. We'll knock the door, come down. And that's how it uh, ran for all these days. Fascinating. And when, when we talk about social distancing as one of the key elements of this new social norm that we have around uh, COVID. Uh, how does that work at the Royal Orchid? So uh, over here, what we had done, because we were running with uh, as less staff possible, we ensured that everyone stays in-house. So we were running with around 26 staff that time, wherein we had given them accommodation in the hotel. Now from production till service of everything, like even in kitchens, we had ensured that we had a couple of different sections in the kitchen. So we ensured that the you know work tables are separated by around six, seven feet. If one is working in this corner, the other will walk in the other corner. They always had all those measures like your mask, your sanitizers, your gloves with them. Even when the product used to come to the hotel, that used to be sanitized and, and at the receiving area. And then it used to be issued. So that's how in terms of production, in service again, what we used to do, like, uh, as I said, we used to put food outside and the guests will take it inside with them. So then comes the clearance, you know. So what we used to do is we used to ensure that whenever our people go for service or clearance, at least thrice a day, we used to sanitize the place with sodium hypochlorate. And that's how it used to be done so that there is not a single chance of contamination. Right. So, I mean, these are good precautions that you have been taking. Uh, Pranav, what has been the state of the guests at the hotel at this time? Because you have been taking care of, you know, different quantum of batches. What has been the state of their mind when they come to you? Yes, they used to be very afraid. Like, uh, because when, they, when you see the news from America and the other European countries, where you know the death rate was very high. So they were very concerned. So what we used to do, we used to mentor them at the time of check-in only. And also we used to be in touch with them over phone, in room, all their concerns we used to handle, you know, at times they used to panic because they, they were not allowed to go out. 
and you might have heard that you know the some places people knowing that they have got covid they jumped from the hospital that kind of news were there so yes there was a big panic but we at our level we used to mentor them we used to build trust in them that don't worry everything is going to fine we all are there with you right and you are not a patient you just have contacted someone so you might might not and more possibility possibilities are there that you might not so we used to give them hope you no know? right so you know making them feel at home yes another problem that you know all these people who've been quarantined have been facing is stress because uh, there has been fear there has been anxiety there has been depression that everyone is going through you coming from the hospitality sector i mean you have been i think probably uh, the the second doctors to them as well if i may say so without a degree who at least are treating them uh, you know in terms of their mental state how would you entertain the guest whilst not breaching health and safety protocols well that's very good question we had a very innovative idea what we did is we made small small groups whatsapp groups with the guest and we used to play antrakshari with them can you imagine okay. and that that really worked you know that used to take the stress away because we had made a group so that you know anybody requiring anything can just give a call we were also not manning our front desk and all that where they can give a call so we thought of uh, making a group and when there were call, lots of youngsters because you know doctors nurses everywhere it was lots of young people so one day this idea clicked so one of them was a very good singer from there it all started we put all of them on a group call and we used to do that terrific uh, let's um, move to the uh, the other side of the coin if you will in terms of uh, the hospitality industry which is the staff um obviously in these times as a leader you would have a very different situation in terms of how you are motivating them and how staff is also coping with change give us an idea of how it is at the royal lockin see this is a time when uh, your leadership skills are being tested on all different parameters yes now when you say about royal lockin yes the employees morale was very down but our company was you know very far sighted is very far sighted so when this lockdown started and people went back home you know they had nothing to do so our company started lots of training programs like they started management development right now we also own a presidency college of hotel management which is associated with us which is a subsidiary of uh, hotel royal rocket so they started around nine courses wherein we know that you know uh, at this time people are talking that people uh, the staff will be laid over but i am telling you they are apart from being laid over they are themselves taking a call to go back to their home you know so we are we understood that tomorrow when we open we are going to have a shortage of staff too so we started doing multi skilling training you know so all these kind of activities which kept the staff engaged and with that we were able to build trust in the people got it so give us an idea uh pranav what is your typical day like and what sort of challenges do you and your staff face on a daily basis so uh, my day would start with the supervision of the service of breakfast in the morning yes the challenges what we face is you know there are lots of time when the guests get panic that cannot stay in the room they'll come outside which we cannot afford to because we don't want because it is for the containment why they are kept in a why they are isolated so that it doesn't pass on so making them understand yes it becomes a challenge supply is a challenge people coming to work is a challenge because we have to run it with the just 25 26 people so that used to be a big challenge in between that you know we also had to do couple of movement because we were also involved in csr activities wherein we used to serve 3 400 meals at different places there were some ashrams where we sent food so those and because everything was shut so finding material again used to be very difficult where at times i even had to go out with my pass and you know buy whatever available across the street absolutely i mean these are basic challenges that all of us are hearing in fact one thing pranav i want to add over here as well you know i was talking to someone uh, else in terms of another brand but they were clearly were indicating that the employees themselves are actually coming out and saying that instead of you know sacking people instead of give you know 
I mean, letting of people, laying of people. Let's do one thing. We will work fifteen days a month. Two people. I work for fifteen days. Another person will replace me for fifteen days. So automatically, there is a fifty percent reduction in terms of the staff. But both our basic needs are met. So that's the kind of understanding that people have come along. I mean, people are coming together to support each other, which is again a good thing on this front. Uh, with this. if you have to talk about the hospitality industry we've been talking about how it's impacting the staff as well how is business got impacted because obviously your footfall will be less uh, secondly revenues have been impacted across so yes see since uh, february end the cancellation started okay your mice your social segments your rooms all cancellation started from february end we had say uh, for march we had good numbers on the book initially when we entered the month hmm. but within first week there was around 60% cancellations hmm yeah wow so so with 60% cancellations as well i mean i have you started providing refunds to them or is it that you've just said okay you can come and stay with us anytime you can book you know book once everything sorts out that was a mutual kind of consent there were okay. some people there were some corporates who wanted to use their whatever deposit they had given whatever you know money was there with us that they wanted to use it later whenever it opens hmm. yes there were a couple of uh, instances where we had to refund money okay and they okay. did it right and overall what do you think that the industry will actually have to do uh, to get back to normalcy i mean is there a post covid plan you know that has already already been planned by the management yes like as i told you multi skilling that is also a part of uh, you know post covid plan now apart from that that was uh, in terms of manpower because see now man even in hospitality you'll find lot many people have come outside to work from you know they want to and especially in the lower positions like associate levels they want to go back you know so we 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 uh, thought that there'll be acute shortage of manpower so one thing we started was manpower training next was what is next what is going to be the new normal what is going to be the guest concern once we start so we started making our sops you know in terms of safety sanitation hygiene health so with all those things right now we have got good time there's a good time where we have made all our sops and we also have been in talks with lots of service provider who are kind of uh, you know uh, to maintain a clinical level of hygiene no so we are in uh, talks with them so that before we start as i said like you know once uh, this quarantine people goes we are going to take a shut down for a week so okay. we are going to ensure that the hotel is completely disinfected we are looking at uh, options in that recently we got to know that there is something like you know there is a spray which you do it once it lasts for 6 months you know the effect okay. lasts for 6 months that is being done in rashtrapati bhavan you know so we are getting into all those things how to go ahead how to make the things contactless from starting from your pickup valet pickup because see now again the guests who are coming will not try and come in a normal car which is standing in the airport mm-hmm. so they will obviously look for the hotel cars because they are damn sure that this will be a more safer option mm-hmm. so we have looked into from there like you know putting a screen between driver and the passenger they are always wearing their mask and whatever safety gla- uh, uh, gears what we have provided to them sanitizers and everything is provided so from there to putting uh, a thermometers i mean uh, laser thermometers uh, uh, there is a device which you put it on your you know dfmd that is our door frame metal detector which will take your temperature which will record it and which can be integrated with your pos so those things how we can do contactless check in how we can do a pre check in you know how the guest goes in the room what kind of service because we know that uh, it's only room service which the hotels will start with you know the those lavish breakfast and those things are of past as of now so we are just planning and implementing those things in place so that the moment we start we are full ready in that terrific uh, so one of the things that um, you know brings us to at this point pranav is the um, in this new era uh, of post covid and especially with some of the practices that you're talking about clearly lends itself to the use of um, technology uh, to an even larger extent 
Um, obviously, technology was already in hotels like the Royal Orchid before. But when you look at the post-COVID era now, how do you see the role of technology? Could you give us some examples of what sort of tech we will see going forward? So it's going to be all technology driven, you know, from your contactless check-in, wherein, you know, you have your check-in done uh, over the web, you know, from there it starts how you, the door keys and those things are gone. You have to have your RFIDs, even in terms of those are in terms of guests. Again, you have to take lots of measures in terms of your backend and your internal mm -hmm. guests, you know, starting from how you receive your thing. So we have, we are planning to make a rail kind of thing where all the materials say like vegetables, they will come, they will put over there and that is being sanitized, stored for some time. Only after that, it goes to my store or the cold room. You know, we want to ensure all the taps have been changed from the uh, normal taps to, again, uh, you know, sensors, sensor based and all those okay. things, the sanitizers, again, sensor based. So all these kind of technologies will come into effect. Got it. And, and I think the, just to wrap it all up uh, in terms of the state of the industry and how this industry is going to play out going forward. Uh, and if one was to break the market up into, you've got the business travelers on one side, you've got the, um, uh, the exhibitions and trade on the other side, and then you've got leisure. Obviously, uh, some of those segments are going to be hugely impacted, uh, you know, given social norms and uh, new behaviors and so on. And when we talk to economists, they tell us that uh, industries like transportation, especially aviation and hospitality with tourism, of course, will be the three that will see a significant decline. So as an industry, what is the message you'd like to leave your uh, customers with in, in terms of what should they be looking for from you all to come back? See, as an industry, yes, the corporate movement, which used to happen a lot, like 60% business used to come from the corporate, will go away for sure. Up till the time any uh, vaccination doesn't come. Right? But, you know, in terms of uh, travel, yes, people will travel. There won't be much corporate travel. But socials will travel. You know, they have been in home for last two, three months. So they will travel for a short, shorter distance in maybe in their personal cars. You know, we are looking at other options wherein we, you know, uh, as, you know, work from home, work from hotel. That model also we are looking. Now, big banquets won't be viable at this moment. Mm -hmm. So we might convert them into small offices, you know, and let it out. So these are a couple of things what we are planning as of now. Again, our, you know, the destinations like uh, resort destinations or the jungle destinations, we are uh, quite sure that people will go there. Now, recently when the liquor was open, we all saw what kind of uh, crowd was there. Correct. So I think the, the same goes for the hotel also. You know, once, once the lockdown and these norms are eased, people will move out. Not maybe somebody not with their elderly parents or elderly members and children's. But yes, couples and singles, they will move out. They will venture out. And what we are going to provide, see, we, we are doing, going into a different kind of cleaning protocol, which also look, uh, uh, deals into learning and certification so that we keep on hammering, 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 and we achieve that, you know, because we cannot take a chance, both for our guests as well as for the staff, because both are important for us. Terrific. Well, Pranav, thank you so much for that very insightful discussion. I mean, clearly uh, for us, um, the hospitality, transportation, travel, tourism, these are very important sectors, as we say, the pillars of the economy. And one of the analysis that Hiran and I were doing offline is we saw that India gets more than 10% of its economy uh, of the GDP coming from the hospitality, uh, travel and tourism industry. So this is indeed a very important sector for the country. And it's the same if you look across G7 uh, in the US, for example, uh, this industry, along with travel and transportation, contributes $1.6 trillion. Right. So it's an extremely important sector. And uh, we, we found this discussion with you, uh, you know, as someone who's on the front lines, extremely insightful. Thank you very much, uh, Pranav. And I'm sure we have okay. left our, lead, uh, our, our viewers with some very interesting thoughts on the basis of this, isn't it? Absolutely, Absolutely, Sanjay. I mean, a great conversation, great insights. I think uh, great things and great uh, uh, 
uh, in great stuff to look forward to as well once the lockdown ends and that's what i think pranam and everyone will be hoping for uh, but thank you all for tuning in you know uh, sanjay and i will be back at uh, same time to share more extraordinary leaders in these extraordinary times see you soon <laughs>